We would like to welcome to the program Becca Morris, who is with Metro's Health Department. And if you're somebody who has thought about quitting smoking, this is going to be a topic that you really want to listen to and pay close attention to because mm -hmm. Becca here is going to be talking all about that topic and, and the fact that smoking is prevalent here in Tennessee, right? It is. Roughly 24% of Tennesseans smoke, which is well above the national average of 18%. I mean, it's been a consistent issue, although I will say to a lot of credit for businesses and, and healthcare industry alike, it, you know, they seem to be doing a lot of things to try to curb it for a lot of folks. Absolutely. But it's, it's difficult to curb. Absolutely. And, and we're seeing a decline in smoking, but it's just not as significant as we would like for it to be. Um, you know, as the Surgeon General said this past year, it's a winnable battle, and we believe that it's a winnable battle. Um, it's just getting all the players um, on the team, um, and many of those players are those smokers that are out there that have had many, many failed attempts at quitting, so what can we do to help them? Sure, and we're not just talking about smoking. I mean, obviously, that's the first thing that comes to mind, but there's a lot of different kind of tobacco uses out there. I mean, we're not talking dip, chew, snuff. So how many Tennesseans use these forms of tobacco? Sure, um, and it's interesting because a lot of people don't think smokeless tobacco is harmful. Sure. You know, you don't smoke it, you don't swallow it, so I'm it, not can't, inhaling it, can't, anything. Hurt, it yeah. can't hurt me, but that's, you know, that's not true, and, and we want more people to understand the harmful effects of chew tobacco. Roughly 6% of Tennesseans smoke, um, use smokeless tobacco, um, and that's, again, above the national average of around 4%. Okay, when we're talking about Tennesseans, again specifically, Absolutely. and we're going back to smoking, but uh, to tobacco of any kind, mm -hmm. at what age do you all find, does it statistically say, that people begin to use these products? Well, 70% of um, Americans across the board, Tennesseans alike, begin smoking before the age of 18. Most have their first cigarette at the age of 11, and many addicted by the age of 14. All right, so many people have tried to stop, mm -hmm. you know, tried to quit. They're unsuccessful. Um, it, it's one of those things, though, that I think that they, they try, they, they, they quit, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, a couple weeks later, they're, yes, they're yes. back at it. Um, do you find that there are enough programs out there nowadays and good ones that are, are making progress as far as that's concerned Absolutely. to keep them from doing that? Absolutely. Um, again, it's hard to be a quitter um, once you're addicted to cigarette smoke, but it doesn't mean that you can't make that, um, make that reach and you can reach that. Um, there's multiple therapies that are out there, including medications that you can try, um, nicotine replacement therapies, there's over-the-counter, there's also prescriptive, there's also non-nicotine medications, and again, we encourage anyone to speak to their provider and, and talk to them about the best options for them, but there's also non-medication um, options, including counseling, just talking to your doctor. Um, there's mobile apps that are getting a lot of rage right now where they send you little messages saying, hey, you can do this. You've gone 30 minutes without a cigarette. So again, there's all kinds of really new, interesting, intriguing tools that are out there to help people succeed. Yeah, to encourage them. Absolutely. Also, smoking cessation classes, those still exist. They That's do. That's a great way for people to be able to sign up. Talk with other folks, obviously, that are kind of battling the same thing or, yeah, or facing the same no. challenge, I should say, Absolutely. in terms of wanting to do that. And are those helpful? They are. Um, we, we're seeing a trend away, um, away from the classes, um, more so, and there's actually online classes that are actually occurring now where you can wow. Skype with other people who are trying to quit. So again, we're trying to meet um, the technology sure. um, so that people are comfortable in those ways. So, you know, although classes are incredibly successful and we encourage them and we still have them across the community, a lot of people are using more of the telephonic coaching as well as the mobile apps um, to, to help with that counseling piece. But what we do like to talk about is that oftentimes when you use the NRT mixed with the counseling, mixed with having someone to talk to, you're going to be much more successful at that quit attempt. So using one, you could be successful, but partnering them together, you're going to be more successful in quitting. Do you find also that people do better with groups? I mean, you know, whether it be something via Skype or if Absolutely. it's something, you know, more in a setting of just trying to reach out within your own company, too. I mean, I know a lot of companies try to, to have folks quit. And we encourage it. You know, oftentimes, you know, you want to set a quit date. That's the most important part. But when you have people that are quitting with you, when you have a group, you that know, support. at work. Absolutely. Support is, is number one in being successful in quitting. Sure. You shouldn't be shameful of trying to quit smoking. You should let the world know that you're trying to do it and you're going to be much more successful. So we don't necessarily see people smoking as much in public, I should say. I mean, mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier on, a lot of restaurants have said, you know, no more. I mean, Absolutely. that's been in existence for a long time. Absolutely. But anywhere even, you know, any kind of place where you shopping malls, the whole thing, you don't necessarily see people doing that a whole right. lot anymore. People are smoking at home. The bad thing, though, is if kids are around. Talk Absolutely. a little bit about the disadvantages of having kids 
being, you know, exposed to, to smoke or tobacco products in general? Well, I mean, secondhand smoke has over 7,000 chemicals in it. Um, 100 of those toxic, 70 of those have been proven to cause cancer. Um, around children, it gets, even, it gets even worse with their delicate systems. So more ear infections, more severe asthma attacks, uh, more ear infections, uh, more respiratory illness, including sudden, in def sudden infant, infant death syndrome. So again, we want to be very cognizant of children in the home. If you have children in your home, you shouldn't let anyone smoke in your home um, or near your home. You should have a smoke-free car. Um, it's not okay. Rolling down the windows does not help alleviate the smoke. Make sure your daycares and your children's schools are smoke free. Oh, that's something, you that's know, a great point. To absolutely. Make. And then also looking, you know, if someone in your home does smoke, you know, again, having them go outside obviously is first choice, but also you want to think about the fact when they do come inside, have them wash their hands, have them have a particular jacket that they put on to go outside and smoke in. They take that jacket off and then the smoke particles are not on them as they're holding the infant. So those are just separate things that you want to think about that are definitely going to help alleviate um, the secondhand smoke issues. That's so interesting. Yeah. It's so many good points to make as far as that's concerned. And we should also talk when we're talking about babies and children, mm -hmm. if you're wanting to start a family mm -hmm. and you are a smoker, whether or not your dad or mom who's going to be carrying the baby, this is the time to do it. Absolutely. You definitely want to think about quitting before you get pregnant or you definitely do not want to be smoking while you're pregnant. Yeah. All right, Absolutely. let's go ahead and say, you make that decision, you say, I wanna quit. And as I mentioned already, a lot of people struggle. Right. They go back and forth pretty mm -hmm. easily. So where do you start? What's the first thing that you could tell folks, Becca, of this is the great place to start right here? It's talk to your doctor. Talk yeah. to your doctor, have the conversation, find out what's going to be the best method for you to quit. Um, you know, set the quit date. Um, you know, we have the Great American Smoke Out that exists here in the country, and it's a wonderful day. It's a great day where people actually put down the butts for a day, but we always try to tell people, well, that's a great day to set it and stick with it. Um, so pick a date that means something to you. Is it Great American Smoke Out? Is it your birthday? Is it your anniversary? Pick a date that matters and stick to it. Put it on the calendar, circle it. Um, decide whether or not you're going to use nicotine replacement therapy and start. Keep trying. You may not be successful the first time. Again, like I think, I, you know, like I've said, it's sometimes seven to nine attempts um, before someone is successful. So keep trying. Yeah, and setting that goal is so important. Like you Absolutely. said, picking a certain date, a mm -hmm. special date, that's even better. Yeah. All right. Well, one last thing I want to ask you, as far as healthcare providers, mm -hmm. you had mentioned some of the different things, the patches and whatnot. Mm -hmm. What else can they offer up, folks who come to them and say, "I'm ready to quit"? Resource guidance. I mean, you really need to talk to your healthcare provider if you're thinking about quitting. They really are a a key part of being successful um, in the process. And they work with you, obviously. Absolutely, the whole time. absolutely. What, if you are someone who faces that challenge of then falling off the wagon per se or whatever and saying, "Okay, I'm, I've got to go back," you can always pick back up that conversation, obviously, with them. Yes, it's so important. Yeah. Um, never forget that they're there for you, but the community's here for you, and we want you to be healthy. Excellent. All right, Becca Morris with Metro Health Department, thank you so much for your time. This is such really Thank good you. information. Thank you for having me. All right.